Hi all, Shannon here from A Little Adrift. So one of the things that I've actually gotten a few emails about in recent months is my Vipassana meditation course. So I took a 10 day Vipassana course eight years ago on my round the world trip. And over the last few years, I've seen it get a lot more traction online, more people talking about it and blogging about their experience. So, you know, I wanted to offer a handful of tips for people who are thinking about taking a course or just about to head into one. Some ideas, some things that um, perhaps if I'd known ahead of time, maybe things might have gone a little bit more smoothly because, you know, if you found my online blog, um, you know, around day five, I had some really big issues. I wanted to leave and, you know, this was my own experience. But in the years since, there are a few things that, you know, other friends who have taken them have come and we've discussed as things that perhaps you should know if you're a beginner and you're just heading into a Vipassana course. And so the number one thing, the thing that I think can make or break your ability to make it through those 10 days is going into the course with no expectations, but with the expectation that you will adhere to the rules. And so no expectations for what you're going to get out of it, but expect of yourself that everything that they list out, the no silence, the no reading, the no talking, sticking to the diet, all of these things, all of the meditation practice, that you're going to do them. If you're already hedging your bets and you're already already thinking, well, I'm just going to sneak this, I'm going to bring my cell phones, you know, my cigarettes, these sorts of things so that you can sneak them. Well, you're already, you know, maybe not ready for the course. It's not, you're not going to get as much out of it. But if you really hold yourself to it, you go into the course knowing that this is something that you chose, that you want to learn the technique and these are the rules of the technique, then these are really the only expectations that you should hold. So what you're going to get out of it, all of these other blog posts might say people, some people helped with their personal pain, you know, back pain, that sort of thing, or other people have like healed from anxiety. It'll, you know, there are a lot of things that you may have read about, but for yourself, go in with no expectations because then what you get out of it, instead of sort of limiting what you're going to get out of it, you have so many more opportunities for what you can receive from all of those hours of meditation. All right, so my second idea is a lot more practical, and that is that you should practice a sitting posture or just practice sitting unsupported for about an hour a day. Now, they do allow chair rests for some people. You've got to really have extreme circumstances. You have to have an injury or a very big reason why they should give you a wall support or a chair. Because in general, everyone feels pain, and that's just going to be a part of it, and they know that. So one of the things that if you you know are prepping ahead of time, you have a month or so before your course, try each night while you're watching TV or you're doing something sitting unsupported on the floor just for an hour. Pick a, pick a pillow up, see if there's different positions that are more comfortable for yourself. You don't have to like, you know, try to meditate. This is more about building the muscles and everything that it will take. And you could also do core strengthening exercises. So to hold yourself upright, your back and everything for that long is really hard for some people, especially if, you know, you sit at a desk all day. You know, you might have weaker muscles than some other people might. And so prepping ahead of time, so doing that hour of practice really, really might help you. All right, another idea is number three. And if you have dietary or mental health or any sort of restrictions or adjustments like this, you have to email your Vipassana course ahead of time. So for me, I'm vegetarian, which actually is the easy one. I didn't have to email them because all courses offer vegetarian food. That is the food that everybody eats. But I had another friend who was celiac and she attended the course and she made sure that the center that she was attending had the ability to serve her needs. And not all of them do. So you have to sort of seek out that information and communicate ahead of time because showing up the day of your meditation course is not the time to tell them that, you know, you have mental health issues or medication for certain things that might prevent you from getting the full, the fullness of the experience. You know, they are not mental health professionals. They are not doctors. You are often in a rural location. And so just make sure that you communicate ahead of time anything sort of specific uniquely to your own situation that you think that they ought to know and clear it, clear ahead of time that, that they can help you, you know, have the full Vipassana experience in a safe manner, not only for yourself, but for everybody else at the course that, you know, that um, 10 days. So my next idea is that you shouldn't read the discourses. You know, I put a lot of information out there. I put my own experiences. I sort of talked about what it was like after six months. I have those posts linked below, but in terms of people who are, you know, you've heard about the teachings, perhaps somebody that you know and who has taken a Vipassana has sort of told you some of the core ideas about Vipassana. 
that's enough. You know, there are video discourses online, there are things of this nature. So all of the video discourses that you're going to watch each of the 10 nights are online. You can even buy a book and it's great once you're out of the course, you can buy the book of the discourses and you can think on it and chew on it. But one of the things I most loved about my Vipassana was the incremental nature of all of this knowledge. And so it's a process. They don't just sort of give you the technique and the knowledge on day one and make you practice it for 10 days. Instead, you build a foundation of sort of meditative technique and meditative ideas and ideas about suffering and impermanence and all of this sort of thing. But the way that they build them, I feel is really integral to, to getting the most out of your Vipassana experience. So do not read the discourses ahead of time, sort of read up on tips, read up on anything else that you need to feel comfortable going into your experiences, but steer clear of actually trying to learn the teachings ahead of time because you will have plenty of time inside and during all those hours of meditation to practice what they're teaching you. And the last tip, it's really the, the last thing because you can show up to a Vipassana course. Let me just say this, you can show up to a Vipassana course just with yourself and some clothes and everything is taken care of. That's it. That's all you have to actually do. But these other tips and ideas will help you get the most out of it. And the last one is clear your schedule. Clear your schedule of obligations, clear your schedule of bill payments, of everything, and do it for the day after the course as well. But make sure that when you're sitting in the Vipassana, you are not worried about, oh, did I you know, schedule the payment for my electricity? Or what about that business meeting? Like set your email responder, autoresponder, Email all of your friends so they know where you are and why you're offline, and then surrender to the experience. You will be asked to give up all of your communication devices, your cell phone, and all of these sorts of things. And so make sure that you take those extra steps, especially if you're a busy professional or you're a mom or you're any of these sorts of things. You want to clear your mind, clear these obligations, give yourself the biggest chance of being able to be in there without worrying about life on the outside. So take care of that. Clear your schedule and, and then give everybody you know and love the number for the Vipassana Center and trust that if there is something that you really need to know, that they will contact the center and the center will let you know. So other than that, those are sort of the main things. You can schedule your Vipassanas online. I actually have a beginner's guide that I wrote with more tips, more ideas that pulls from all the advice from the internet, everything online into one spot about people you know, what they wish they had known before, how to prepare for a Vipassana, and all sort of your questions answered that you might have. But these are the key ones. So thanks so much. My name is Shannon O'Donnell, and I write at A Little Adrift. You can find me online at ShannonRTW, A Little Adrift on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks.